Hello everyone, hope you folks can hear me. Uh, welcome to our streaming session, CICD pipelines for infrastructure automation, network automation. My name is Adrian Liesi, as usual. And welcome to, I believe is episode nine. We're a couple of months in, we're still working on our pipeline, uh, but we're making great progress. We're gonna work today on PyETS. We started a couple of weeks ago, and then we're going to continue today with PyTS. Last week, uh, we couldn't have the streaming. Uh, I was at Cisco Live uh, in Las Vegas uh, for all of last week. Uh, had a lot of fun. Very, very busy. I don't know if you folks have uh, attended a Cisco Live or you've been there last week. Uh, but for me, it was very busy, very good event though. Lots of discussions, uh, lots of feedback, uh, lots of presentations, uh, and just a great overall event. Like I said, for me, I believe it was one of the busiest, if not the busiest, one of the busiest events that I've been to. Um, so all good. On that side, I'm back home. We're back streaming, like I said. So we're gonna continue with PyTS. Uh, so I have here, I had rebooted my CentOS 9 because I had installed um, an update to my Parallels installation. They released some updates. I had installed them and then Parallels tools. I had installed them in in my CentOS image here, and then I had to reboot it, and then it just came online here. I was checking for the Docker containers for both uh, GitLab Community Edition and the GitLab Runner, and they're running and they're healthy, and it looks like I can even log in. Let me see. If I can log in, and I can, I wanna save it. And I have my CICD folder here, uh, which is fine. So that's nice. Let me open up um, my remote connection here. So it's going to be Remote Explorer. Is this one uh, connecting current window? Password. SSHing into my CentOS 9 VM that's running GitLab CE, GitLab Runner. Okay, so I'm connected. I'm gonna explore open folder, um, home parallels. Okay. Password again. And here, uh, it looks like we were at the pre-triggered data file and then post-triggered data file. I have the job defined. I have my test environment with my four devices running in CML. Uh, no, I don't want. So then let's go ahead and um, fill out the information for the pre-triggered data file.yaml. So this file will be passing as we run the PyTS job in the pre-snapshot stage of the pipeline. And with this file, we're gonna tell PyTS what to do, right? Uh, would like to access your contacts. No parallels, you don't need that. Right, so we're gonna tell PyTS in the pre-snapshot phase of our pipeline, hey, take a snapshot and run these show commands on my devices and save that information, right, nicely in JSON format so that we can do diffs between the pre and the post, make sure that uh, you know the changes that we want to apply as part of our pipeline have been successfully applied. So the pre-triggered data file.yaml, and you'll see with PyTS, everything is YAML. 
right? Um, the test environment, you've seen it's YAML. The job, it's Python, but then the pre post trigger data files would be both YAML. And the post trigger data file, we'll get to this also hopefully today, will be what we want PyTS to take a snapshot of post change. So we'll have three stages in our pipeline. Uh, PyTS pre-snapshot, which is going to do exactly what we tell it to do here in this file. We have our Ansible stage where we configure what we've seen in previous sessions of our streaming here. We configure Ansible, right, for OSPF. So we're going to configure OSPF. We're going to add new interfaces for SPF. We can configure BGP. We can configure a whole device completely. But for the purposes of our pipeline so far, we only have OSPF. If there's requests for any other features, let me know in the chat. Let me see any folks in the chat. By the way, uh, yes, there's some folks. Thank you all for joining the stream. Um, so if you have any questions or you'd like to see any other features, Ansible playbooks to do other configurations on our Nexus switches, let me know in the chat. And depending on time, we might address it. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and have a look at the pre-trigger data file. And we'll start with a couple of variables. of device one is going to be our, for us distribution suite zero one and device two is going to be distribution switch zero two so this is just so that we can pass in uh, device one and device two as variables in our uh, yaml file here and this will be of course taken from the test environment YAML, this switch one and and switch two. I'm glad I called that. So 10, 10, 177, 10, 10, 178, uh, distribution switch one and two. So once we have this, the variables, we want the pre snapshot section would be groups of devices that we're uh, targeting with this pre snapshot it would be an xos so our nexus switches our source and this is just the package that will be used uh, by PyTS to connect is genie.libs.sdk and the class from this package would be triggers dot blitz dot blitz dot blitz and then we have the test sections what we want PyTS to test for us so where you get this would be documentation for PyTS, right? Or sample YAML files that folks have previously built. Uh, but this is the Genie library that you need as you came from it to actually use PyTS to connect to these devices uh, and to run the commands that you needed to run. Okay, so text sections. We'll have here, first of all, verify OSPF neighborships. Right, and we want to run in parallel a couple of commands. Parse. And we want the devices that we want to parse would be Uh, vars uh, device one 
right? We want to connect to that device. Command that we want to run is show IP OSPF neighbors detail. And we want to make sure that it includes the following contains key value and I have here neighbors and we have 172.16.252.25 and neighbors 33 so these are the OSPF neighbors for our switch one we want to make sure that the neighborships are established right so I'm running the show SPF neighbors detail command on my device one on my Nexus distribution switch one which is a Nexus 9000 V and I want to make sure that these neighbors are showing up uh, as part of that show SPF neighbor command Okay, same thing for device two. So I wanted to parse device will be device two. So I have ours device two and then the command I want to run is the same command. show IP OSPF neighbors detail and I want to make sure that it contains the same neighbors right 22 250 to 25 and 250 to 33 All right, and then, so this is the verify uh, OSPF neighborships. I want to make sure that also the OSPF routes are propagated. So I'm going to have a different test section where I'm going to say I want to verify advertised OSPF routes. I want to run it in parallel again and I want to parse device one right parse device one the command I want to run is show IP route and I want to make sure it includes contains key value of routes and I want to make sure that this route is in the routing table 192.168.02 slash 32 and it's learned from OSPF contains key value source protocol protocol and I want to make sure it's learned over OSPF right so this is how you check that uh, this is a loopback interface on switch 2 so make sure that is learned on switch 1 and same thing for device 2 I want to parse
And I want to check device two here. I'll do a show IP route, contain routes. I have the loopback from switch one and it's learned over OSPF. All right, so these are the routes I want to check. You want to check more routes, just add contains key values like we've done above. And that's how you kind of get an operational status of your network with PyTS, right? With these YAML files, you just tell PyTS run these commands, check for this, and it's gonna do exactly what you tell it to do. All right, and then we'll have a section here which we're gonna call pre-snapshot OSPF. It's gonna be here, pre-snapshot OSPF. And we're gonna tell it also to run in parallel And we're not gonna tell it to parse, but we're gonna tell it to learn all the OSPF configuration that we have, which is a cool feature. So we're gonna do learn for device, for the first device, we wanna learn everything OSPF. So we're gonna do bars, device one and then we're gonna say feature OSPF SPF and then we're gonna tell it to save the output into a variable name that we're gonna call pre OSPF VARS device one. And then same thing for switch two. We're gonna learn everything OSPF for that second device. learn device to feature OSPF and save it as pre OSPF device two. And then I want to save the output of this in a file. So I'm gonna so I can have it for future reference. So I can go here and do also parallel, parallel. I wanted to use the API. see a bit API and then device will be UUT function will be save take to JSON file so this would be saving that pre OSPF into a file, taking that output from our, everything we learned about OSPF and saving it to a JSON file. So save a dictionary to JSON file. Arguments would be data. And here we have variables.
and it will be that pre or SPF device one. Pre or SPF. Bars device one. And we're going to say file name where we wanted to save this would be pre snapshots. We'll create a folder pre snapshots and then pre OSPF. Pre OSPF bars device one dot JSON. And then let me create a folder here before I forget. So in PyTS, we'll have a new folder and we're going to call it pre snapshots. And that's where our JSON file will be created is pre OSPF virus device one JSON. So we'll do the same thing for our device two. Just going to copy this, paste, and we'll have device two, and then also device two. So that's what I want my PyTS YAML file, my pre snapshot, right? my pre triggered data file. Um, I wanted to make sure I'm connecting to these two devices, device one and device two, right? I have my test sections to verify OSPF neighborships, run them in parallel, uh, connect to both devices, do show IP OSPF neighbors detail, and then make sure that the neighborships are established um, and then I'm verifying advertised OSPF routes as part of this. Again, run it in parallel, connect to the devices in parallel, do show IP route, and make sure that the loopback interfaces from switch two is learned on switch one. And the loopback interface from switch one is learned on switch two. Right? And then wrapping up with saving learning actually everything OSPF uh, on these two devices and then saving that output to a JSON file in this location, right? So that would be our pre-triggered data file. Now let's go ahead and work on our post-triggered data file, which would be stage three of our pipeline, making sure that um, the routes, the new routes that we've advertised are actually propagated and are there. So let me go ahead and do that. Post trigger. So for the post trigger, it can be very similar. Um, very far SPF routes. So let's go and start editing our post trigger data file. So as usual, I'll have at the top bars and I'll have device one, which is distribution switch zero one device two distribution switch zero two. And then I have my post snapshot section here. Uh, groups of devices is going to be again NXOS. Source would be package. Same thing using Genie dot libs dot sdk and then using the blitz class triggers dot blitz dot blitz 
And then I have my test sections, what I want PyTS to test for. So again, we're going to verify OSPF neighborships. Neighborship. Right, we want you gonna run it in parallel. And we want the same thing. Basically, we want the same. We wanna make sure that the neighbor shoots are still there. All right, so I wanna parse show up your SPF neighbors detail. I want to make sure that it includes the two neighbors. Um, the two SPF neighbors are there. If they're not, then my pipeline will fail. I know the neighborships are not there. There's a problem. I need to go and investigate and check and remedy the uh, OSPF issues that have cropped up over there. All right, then I'll have another section Uh, for verifying advertised OSPF routes, right? Similar to what we've had here. So verify OSPF advertised routes. I wanna make sure that the routes are learned and I'll actually modify this as we add new routes. You wanna make sure that you modify this so that it checks for the new routes and we'll go over once we get the pipeline going and we'll perform the first configuration. We'll change, I'll show you how to change this to a git commit, git push and trigger the whole pipeline. So we'll get that uh, in a follow-up session for our stream. Okay, so I wanna check that the routes are there and then I also wanna do a post snapshot OSPF. Section. So I'll have here a post snapshot OSPF section, and I want to run this. I can do also loop, loop variable name would be feature. And then the value of the feature is OSPF. And then actions that I want to perform. I want to do it in parallel. And I want to learn what I want to learn from device. Uh, bars device one. I want to do feature and I'm just going to use the loop variable name here. So I'm going to do variables feature. I want to load everything on SPF. And I want to save that information in a variable name. And that would be post variables feature underscore and bars device one. Right, so I wanna save everything that's learned uh, about OSPF. And you see here, I'm doing a bit different. Instead of doing a parallel, I'm doing a loop for the OSPF feature, I uh, replaced it over here. And I wanna do the same exact thing for my second device. device two, 
OSPI feature and I want to save it as a variable name parse device 2 and then I want to save these output to the file similar to what we've had before so I'll have uh, actions parallel learn and I want to have actions parallel save the file In parallel, I also want you to go ahead and save the output to JSON. So we'll use the function save dig to JSON file, passing arguments would be data I want you to take um, variables and this would be post OSPF Bars device one bars device one and I want you to save it as file name will be post snapshot. As the folder post snapshots post underscore variables feature underscore bars device one dot JSON. Right, learn everything OSPI from device one, save it in that post variables, variable name, and then take that, it's a Python dictionary, and drop it into a JSON file at this location. So let me create also a post snapshots folder here before I forget. Post snapshots. So that will be the folder that will contain the output of my everything I've learned OSPF on both of these two devices will be stored in that location with this name. So let me do the exact same thing for my second switch, which be just copying this. Pasting it like so, and then go device two and go device two here. All right, so I have my actions for post snapshot SPF. And then I'm going to load the snapshots for both pre and post. I'm gonna have this as a new test section. Right, I have post snapshot SPI, verify advertised routes, verify SPI neighborship. I'm gonna have one more section here for my test, and that will be to find at this level, yes, will be 
upload snapshots for both pre and post. I'm going to do a loop again. Loop variable in this case is going to be device. value will be where's device one so I'm gonna loop over each of the devices where's device two and I'm gonna perform the following actions Gonna be API connect to the device. Device would be variable device. Function will be load dict from json file with the following arguments file name would be pre snapshot pre snapshot shots and then will be the pre ospf underscore variables variables device JSON and save it as variable name pre OSPF and then the name of the device. So this is loading up right from that JSON file back into a variable within PyTS. And then same thing for post. I'm just gonna copy this. Copy this and do post snapshots here. And it will be named post OSPF. And then I want to save it as post OSPF variables device. And that's it. Right? So this is my post trigger. Uh, I have four test sections. I'm going to save it. And I have now both my pre triggered data file and my post triggered data file. What I want PyTS to do as part of my snapshots and as part of stage one and stage three of my pipeline. All right, so we have this. Let me see if I'm missing anything else. Pre snapshots, we have the job, we have the test environment specified here, post subsection that the job PY. So I think we're ready with our PyTS configuration, all right? We have it, all the components defined, like we have the job, we have the post, pre pre and post trigger data files what i want pyts to do to check for uh, i have my job.py so um, it's actually looking very good let's see where we are here in parallels 
And if I change the source, what we have here, CICD Twitch. If I do a git status, I have quite a bit of new content in here. So let's do a git push now. Uh, let me go back to GitHub so that you folks can actually take advantage of this if you want to follow along. Uh, so this would be my CICD Twitch. Uh, we didn't commit anything in a while, so let me quickly go uh, and do a git push. So going back to my Visual Studio code, I'll do a git add everything. A git commit with a message of added a docker file and pyts. components of the pipeline. Okay, and then I do a git push. And that should be it. If I go here and refresh, uh, there we go. We have the Docker file, we have PyTS, We've been updated just now. Um, and in the PyTS folder, we have our jobs, post trigger, pre trigger, subsection, test. Oh, we didn't create the, oh, we didn't add the post snapshots and the pre snapshots folders. That's fine. It will, uh, we'll add it. Let me see a git status, nothing to commit. That's fine. So once we start running the pipeline, they'll create files in there and then we'll do another git push. It's, it's okay. <coughs> so now we have our PyTS. <coughs> Let me just. Catch my breath here a bit. Let me check if there's any questions, if I see anything in here. Um, users in chat, I don't see any questions coming through. Um, so I'll assume everything is going okay. Um, all right, so we have our PyTS, we have our Ansible, we have our GitLab. Let's quickly go ahead and also copy everything we've done here and move it into that CICD folder. So this is the one that's part of my GitLab installation. This is the one that goes to GitHub for you folks uh, to be able to clone this, right? Your pipeline, if you wanna build your own, you just go ahead, do a git clone on the CICD-twitch from my account, AI DevNet account on GitHub clone it down and you can follow along and build your own pipeline exactly what I've done here. So now the CICD folder that we have here will contain the exact same information as this one, but this is being uh, monitored as part of my GitLab installation. So this is actually part of my pipeline. Uh, so let me go ahead and where are we? We're kind of a bit behind here with all the content. Let me see what we have in there and I'll start moving things around. So if I change directory and I only have create environment. So there's quite a bit of content that I'm missing from this. So let me go ahead and start copying. So copy recursively from CICD Twitch on the PyTS folder, copied, uh, missing destination. Oh, I wanna copy it here. So we have our PyTS folder now. Let me make sure that it's all up to date and it is, so it has everything in there. Okay, so I've copied the PyTS folder. Uh, I want to copy also Ansible config. 
All right, so I don't need to copy recursively anymore. I just need to copy from CICD Twitch. Ansible, I want to copy it here. I want to copy the Docker file. Uh, I want to copy the hosts file um, and I want to copy recursively this time because I'm copying a folder will be the host bars will be the group bars will be the config folder will be the actions and let's see how it looks it looks good we have the actions ansible config config create environment docker file and then under create environment let's see what do we have here so if i change directory to create environment i have my docker compose yaml i have my gitlab setup log i have my make file setup sh verify runners so i'm good on that side uh, okay so i think i have uh, everything now updated on my ci cd if I expand it here, I don't really need the license in there, um, but let me copy the license too, just for giggles, license, and it's in there. Okay, so if I do a git add everything now, Uh, and do a git commit and we'll add the message here added ansible config docker file and pyts config then I do a git push Username will be developer, password, and there we go. Now if I go back here and I refresh, I should, there we go. Okay, so it looks good we're up to date now we have configure spf we have create environment pyts is in there uh, we have our job our post pre test environment perfect so now if i go one level up you see here we have the pipelines component and there's no stage there's no pipeline defined uh, as of yet so let's do we have time we can get started we have about 11 minutes here uh, we can get started on configuring our pipeline so we kind of have all our components in place right we have ansible is there we have pyts is there configured uh, so we're ready to define our three stages for our pipeline so for that, let me go ahead and first of all, zoom in a bit on here and let's go ahead and have a look at that gitlab-ci. So pipelines, in GitLab, are defined as part of a YAML file. 
I know there's been like a lot of YAML files. You should be fairly comfortable and familiar with YAML files by now. Everything was YAML. Ansible was YAML files. PyTS with a bunch of YAML files. GitLab CE, GitLab Community Edition, definition of the pipeline is also a YAML file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create it here first. So we're gonna do a new file and it has a specific name, right? And this is important because this is what GitLab C is gonna look for um, when checking for definitions of your pipeline. So it's gonna be GitLab and is dash ci dot yaml, right? So you see, it's already has a um, a nice graphic here next to it. So this is specifically for GitLab has this the the CI pipeline definition file would be contained in this yaml file. So then let's start with passing an environment variable. So we'll have default before the script is being run, we're gonna do an export of Ansible host key checking. We want it to be false. So this is for connectivity with Ansible, right? Don't check the authenticity of the SSH connection when you connect through SSH, right? Uh, yes, we trust it by default. Don't uh, make sure you don't need user interaction to say, yes, I trust this host, uh, this is the key. And this is the exact key when you connect to SSH and you confirm, usually that's done manually. I want Ansible to just, yes, go connect to the device automatically. I trust that is the right device. And then importantly, I'm also gonna specify uh, the Docker image. So if you folks remember Docker Hub, right? So it was Hub, Docker Hub, hub.docker.com, I have that image. Um, Adriani. And let me log in on the side here and show you the image. I showed you previously, but we're just gonna go ahead and have a look at it again. And I'm gonna connect. Uh, I'm not a robot. I agree. Oh, I wanna sign in. Adriani. I don't wanna create a new account. And then the password. Right, so I have here last push 14 days ago. So this is the image that I pushed. I showed you as part of our stream. So, but I'm gonna use this one actually. So it's gonna be zero one zero. And it's gonna be the image. Adriani and then C I C D E N and zero one zero. Right, that's the image that it's C I C D E N and that's the tag two months ago, it's fine. So that's the image in which I have Ansible already pre-configured. I have PyTS already pre-installed. I have, I believe it was NetMiko, right? For SSH with the Python. So I have all these pre-required uh, 
components of my pipeline already pre-installed and ready to go. So that's the image that I'm gonna use, right? Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and define my stages. So my pipeline will have three stages. Call it PyTS pre-snapshot. Pre-snapshot will have deploy SPF. And we'll have PyTS post snapshot. So these are the three stages of our pipeline. So let me go ahead and do, actually do we have time? Well, we probably have time. So I'm kind of, I'm gonna start defining my, uh, my stages, what uh, GitLab should do at each stage. So in the snapshot stage, uh, this is gonna be for the PyTS pre-snapshot stage. And what it should do, it should run this script. It should change directory to PyTS. And it should run PyTS command with the job job.py with the test bed file. We called it test environment. Dot uh, YAML. Trigger data file would be the pre trigger data file dot YAML. And I have one the HTML logs to be saved in the pre snapshots folder. And then artifacts from the run should be saved in the Pi ETS pre snapshots pre OSPF distribution switch zero one dot JSON and PyTS pre snapshots snapshots pre OSPF distribution three zero two dot JSON and I want this to always run. Right, so that's the definition of our first stage. Uh, and that's what it should do at the first stage. Then the next stage, right, we have deploy OSPF. Stage and we'll go ahead and continue next week on this. We'll wrap up with the pipeline definition and we should be able to actually give it a try to the pipeline, right? Make sure that everything comes together. We have our definition, we have GitLab, we have Ansible, we have PyTS, we have CML in the background running our simple topology with four devices. So next week, I think we're gonna be close to having a run of our pipeline and seeing how all these components come together. Um, so thank you all for watching, for joining me. Uh, I hope you found this useful and see you on the next one. See you next week when we bring everything together. Hopefully everything works. Uh, see you all next time. Take care, everyone. Bye.